bill. You know, earlier uh, this morning, the ranking member kind of chastised some of his Democrats who did not support the Part D prescription drug bill back in 2003. And as one of the members that was around for the formulation of that bill and for the debate, there were a couple overriding considerations that led me to know. That bill cost over $400 billion. It was the largest expansion of Medicare uh, spending since the creation of the Medicare program in 1965. Not a nickel of it was offset. Not a penny was paid for. And you wonder why today we're running annual trillion dollar budget deficits. And the other consideration too was that language was inserted in the bill that specifically prohibited the federal government to even discuss price with the pharmaceutical industry. The drug companies are the only private company that does business with the federal government where we are specifically prohibited to talk price with them. And I'll tell you who this doesn't divide, HR3. It doesn't divide the American people. Because when I bring this up back home, all of them are shaking their heads. And they may not be Nobel Prize winning economists, but they know when the gig is up and that something isn't on the level here. And they think it's ridiculous that we have a prohibition on price negotiation with the pharmaceutical industry. And then put this in the category of call me cynical, but the chairman of the Commerce Committee that was instrumental in getting the non-negotiating language in the bill suddenly left Congress and became the head lobbyist for the pharmaceutical industry here in Washington. I mean, you wonder why this place ain't on the level sometimes. HR 3 corrects that. And I'll tell you who else this doesn't divide. The President of the United States that campaigned on HR 3. He may not have known what the name was at the time, but back in 2016, he said he wanted to restore price negotiation for these drugs. And that's exactly what we're doing now.